VWAP, day trading strategy, one of the best day trading indicators. This is part two of a, well, two-part series. So if you want to watch part one, you can do that. Um, there's a link in the description below. But you can watch this one first and go back and watch that one if you'd like to. So what I'm sharing with you are a couple of different techniques for using it. So first of all, one of the things that I shared in the last one is that we use standard deviation bands. So the green line is two standard deviations above the volume weighted average price, which is the black line. And then red is two standard deviations below it. Now, so two extra techniques I want to share with you today are two extra things. And that is this. As we scroll back here, one of the ways that you can use this, which is very important, and you know, everyone's looking to get how where to get into the market. And of course, that's absolutely critical. That's how we make money. But you need a defensive part of your game too. So when to get in is the offense part, when to stay out is the defensive part. And most people overtrade a lot. And so the thing is you want to stay out of choppy markets. So remember what VWAP is. It's the volume weighted average price. So this is how it's different than a moving average. Do not con uh, confuse this with a simple moving average or an EMA or anything like that. This incorporates volume. And so again, the professionals use this to help get their clients a decent average price over time uh, during the day. And so when we're at this volume weighted average price, when we're hovering around it, this is a horrible time to trade. This is the defense part of your game. This is what will help you stay out of choppy markets. I have found with so many people come to me and they say, Barry, I've been trading for, it amazes me sometimes. People have been trading for three years, five years, 10 years, and still not making money. I, I, I kind of have respect that they haven't given up, but I mean, it's just crazy that they'd be trading that long and not make money. So when they come to me and I look at their trades and look at their trading longs and their trades that they've taken and their charts and so forth, I would say at least 90% of the time, What's happening is they make money when the markets are trending and moving, there's volatility, et cetera. And then they're giving the money back during choppy market conditions. So it is absolutely critical to be able to identify choppy market conditions. And this is one of the ways to do it. When price is just hovering around the volume weighted average price, VWAP, then you don't want to trade that. There is no edge. There's no statistical edge that is going to just give you choppy markets. We need it to get away from that and to do something significant. So for people who say, oh, you should uh, buy when price goes above, bounces off of it, that's one thing. People say, oh, that's support. And so when price comes down, then use that as support and buy. Really? No, it's not support. It has nothing to do with support resistance levels at all. It's just an average of the value and price that's been traded. It is not a support level. It has nothing to do with support. And so it comes up and then it goes right back down below it. Okay, and it's not a resistance level either. You do not trade this where, oh, you wait for it to go below, come back to it, and then go short like some people teach. No, that's silly. It has nothing to do with support or resistance. These are false teachings. So it comes up, goes, slices through it down, slices above it up, slices through it back down, slices back above it, that is chop. And we do not want to get chopped up. So what do we do during this time? We do nothing. Well, you got a couple of options. Either you just don't trade or you go trade in a different market. So we're showing this stock of Apple right here. You could go trade the Euro. You could go trade the E-minis. You could go trade Bitcoin. You could go trade a different stock sector, whatever. But don't trade this because right now there is no edge. We are at an average. We're at a balancing point. And it's interesting because the term edge, we all know you need to have an edge in trading. And when the market's at a balanced point, you literally have no edge. To get an edge, we want the market to be moving, have, have already moved far away from balanced point. And then we're going to trade it back toward that balanced point. So that's number one. Number two for today's lesson, and let me switch charts here. What I shared in the first part of the series is that we're going to wait for price to get to two standard deviations away from the well, and then we're going to trade it back toward it. So again, that's that edge. We're looking for it to get the edge of the probability curve and trade back toward it. And then when it gets down to two standard deviation below it, 
that's our edge that we trade it back toward the VWAP. And then we're out. Not because it's uh, support here, not because it's resistance here, just because, oh, now we're back to the, an average. And we it's basically a fair value type of concept. And there's no edge. Okay, and that works great. But like everything in trading, that's not all. <laughs> there's always something else. There's no one indicator. This is so important. No one indicator makes you money. Indicators do what they promise. They indicate. Now, that doesn't mean they're useless. It means they indicate something and they can be used as part of a complete trading system. But it's one piece of evidence. So if, if it, one indicator made us money, we wouldn't call them indicators. We call them money makers. So it gives us a piece of evidence and it's telling us something very, very literal, right? Standard deviation. We're far away from that. Now watch what happens as we go forward. All right. So now we get to the edge again, but look, keeps going down, 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 down. Oh my gosh. So now if you were trading back to the VWAP here or here or God forbid here, then no so bueno. In fact, we know bueno. Um, in fact, and it go keeps going down, it keeps going the opposite. So here is the key. You don't want to trade this in a trending market. You don't want to trade this technique, whoops, in a, a dramatically trending market. Then you switch to a trend trading methodology. These are different methodologies. So you need to understand what type of market am I in here? Am I in a market that's not trending? Great. Then you use reversion to the mean trades. Are we trading a market that is trending? Oh, well, then we're going to use the trend trade strategy, not the reversion to the mean trade strategy. They are different things. They're different market conditions. So you've got to be very aware of that. And look, we keep going back down, back down. We, now notice we get below the red line and we keep coming back above it, right? Because that's, again, a statistical edge. That's so very, very unusual for that to do it. Now, one more thing we'll show up here is probably going to happen. Yeah, <laughs> it still does get back to the VWAP. It still eventually does. And then it goes back down. And then let's see when the market closes, it gets right back up to it again. So it is going to go back to the VWAP. It does. So what's the issue? The issue and the question is when it becomes a timing issue. So as we look at the big picture here now, I've shown you the little picture. Let's look at the big picture. So as we look at the big picture, now we've got to add an element of two things. As I said, number one, what is the market condition? Is it trending or not? And then number two, and that's an issue of timing. So if you want to get my timing indicator, which I highly recommend that you get, go to indicatorwebinar.com. It's a recorded webinar, absolutely free. Give it to all my viewers and get my timing indicator. I show you how to trade it, give you a little tutorial and show you how to set up our charts and exactly how to use it. I use it on every single trade entry I take, whether it's a reversion to the mean trade or a trend trade.